All right, so today we're gonna to be swapping out the oil and the oil filter on the 98 Big Bear. Um, from what I've heard, most of the time, the filters don't get changed very often just because you can also reuse the filters. So they're supposed to allow so much flow through. But here in just a little bit, I'll show you how to get that filter cover off. But first we're gonna take a 38 inch socket and we're going to take off the cover on the bottom so we can start draining the hole. What have we got going on here, Blake? Redneck ingenuity. What's going on under there? <laughs> that looks fun. Next step is going to be taking off those three number five Allens that connect to your oil cooler. Um, what I did first was I put the Allen on a electric impact. You probably don't want to use a pneumatic one just to get them broke loose. Cause when you twist with a regular driver, you're putting pressure on it one way instead of like, you know, a drill would do, which is it's forcing it. So I would use that to break them loose and then do the rest by hand. And then this plate should come right off. Oh, nice. Oh, that does not look good. All right, guys. So next, you're just going to pull the filter out from inside of there. Mine was actually so rusted up that uh, this bottom cap was actually stuck inside of the motor. And that's where that other seal is but if you look at it it's in pretty bad shape it's got a whole bunch of just gunk in it and around it, it feels like some kind of metal shaving and that's really not good because that's actually what's keeping most of those larger particles from getting inside of your radiator and they can only like you can see the light through it it's only gonna be able to catch just so much of those little particles and I mean, if you're going to replace it or just take it out, and, I mean, you can just clean it, but I would definitely just go ahead and replace it. Um, k and makes one. It's also metal, so you could probably clean it again if you wanted to. Like I said, they're such a low cost filter. You might as well just go ahead and replace it. But you can see it's got all the little pieces there. So you can have your, um, you have way more surface area for actual filtration. And I mean, this is just... This is not good at all. So I'm gonna let that drain for a little while to try to get as much gunk out of it as I can. But we're gonna slide that new one in in just a minute and we'll see how it goes after that. Alrighty, so uh, I went ahead and just wiped some of this crap out of here just cause there's a whole bunch of little pieces of shrapnel and sand in it. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this new filter in. All right, so pl to place it in there, you're just gonna kind of slide it on. There's gonna be a little stud in there. And then you're gonna put your plate on very carefully. And then from there, you're just gonna put your bolts in and it should press that filter all the way in where it needs to be. All right, so I finally got that little cover on. There was a little O-ring that fell out. I'm pretty sure it just kind of goes in the middle of the cooler lines because that's the only spot where there was a little hole for an O-ring that size. Um, next thing I do is I'm gonna take this electric impact i have a 22 on it this is why i like the craftsman screwdrivers i'm gonna just pop it on there cinch it down i'm not gonna over tighten this just because i don't want it to strip out in the future yeah. where are you where are you at, little screw? There it is. Hold on. That's why. You ever just lose your screw head bits? This one's kind of a pain. There we go. Alright. Now that's all on there. I wouldn't get it much tighter. I mean, if you see it leaking, you can probably wrench it down a little and try to get the suck up all the way, but I would definitely not over tighten it. 
All right, so next thing we're gonna do is just put the plug back on through the bottom and we're gonna fill her up with the wool. All righty, so now we're gonna put our wool in. Um, from what I read on the, the manual on this bike, it says it's gonna be about three quarts. So I went ahead and got the castor oil. I did get 20W50, which I know sounds like a lot, but I mean, I run in Texas, so we're not really prone to cold weather here at all. Um, I did get the motorcycle oil just because the Big Bear has a weird semi-manual clutch from what I've heard. It's actually got a, the basket is in the oil, so it's constantly submerged. And if you use like your regular castor oil stuff, it's got detergents in it that actually kind of eat away at that, uh, the pads in the clutch. So we're going to give this a try and just see how it goes. This will be my first time using it. All right, that's gonna complete it for the video. Um, I'm gonna go and get it hosed off, but once you finish, just make sure that you don't have any leaks and just kind of watch it over time, make sure the oil level's not dropping. And that'll be it for the video. Thanks.